Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Depending the part of the nation of the world where you are. God bless you. Thank God for life. The keeper of Israel, the mighty man of valor, have chosen to keep you alive today. Give him praise. Give him praise for keeping you alive. Give him praise for making you heavy. Give him praise for still allowing air to flow through your nose. We give him all the praise. We give him all the honor. Dominion and thanksgiving, exaltation and excellency. We give him all the thanksgiving forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the glory. That they receive all the glory. Receive honor. Receive all the glory. Receive honor. We say receive all the glory, Lord. Receive honor. Receive all the glory, oh, receive honor, receive all the glory, Lord, receive honor, receive all the glory, receive honor, Father, receive all the glory. Receive all the honor, dominion and thanksgiving, purpose, worship, and mind. May the name of this great King and God be praised, worship, and honor the Lord forever. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your excellent power and mind. Be that glorified, O Lord, and let that glory be above all the earth. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. We just want to say thank you, Father. Thank you for your love and mercy. Thank you for your excellent power and mind. Be that glorified, O Lord, and let that glory be above all the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen, and amen, and amen. Do you know one thing? Sometimes I kept reflecting about this. Somebody sat where you are sitting now. Somebody sat where you are sitting. The office where you are, somebody have sat there before. That part of the world where you are, somebody have been there. And from there, they will go to internet. From there, they will leave the planet Earth. From there, they will go to their maker. In any part of the world you are, are you in any part of African country, somebody have been living there before you were born. Are you in any part of North America or South America? Somebody have been there before you were born. Are you in any part of European country? Somebody have been there before you were born. Are you in any part of Asia? Somebody have been there before you were born. Are you in any part of uh, uh, Australia? Somebody have been there before you were born. In any continent of the world, in the Pacific region, wherever you have been, somebody have been there before you were born. And today they are no more there. The people that were there 200 years ago, 100 years ago, there about, they were no more there. And you are there right now. One day you will no more be there. One day you will be referred to as a past. Mm. One day you shall no more be there. And when you shall no more be there, where will you be? And when you shall no more be there, will you live in a happy horizon? Or will you live where you be full of tears? Is a food for thought. Where will I be when I leave this earth? Where will I spend eternity? Beautiful people have lived here. Educated people have lived here. Intelligent people have lived there. Investors have lived here. You know, in, in, inventors have lived here. 
ugly men and women have lived here, where are they today? They have gone. And life continued. One day, it will also be a past. One day will be a past. But the question is this. Where will you spend the eternity? I am a multi-millionaire, beautiful. I am a professor, beautiful. I am the beauty queen, wonderful. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I am the first to buy this, beautiful. I rode the most expensive car, great. I have traveled around about the world, excellent. But where will you spend the internet? Mm. Mm. Thank you for these compliments. Beautiful shirt here. Yeah, thank you so much, Rachel. Raquel, thank you. Where will you spend the internet? It's a small world. Change your mind. There are some hard decisions you've taken. I will not do this again on this person. He treated me bad. She treated me bad. I will do this. Again. No, change your mind. Hmm? Change your mind. Change your mind for better. Hmm? Change your mind. And the God who sees the change in your mind will visit you in a great way. Thank you, Jesus. We are still in a series of what we have been teaching. What is separating you from the love of God? You that started with a great zeal. In those days, hey, are you going to buy a supermarket? Are you going to buy to collect money? Wherever you are, you're spreading the word of God. In those days, trash is always in your bag. What is in your purse today? Lipstick. That of the eyes. Hmm? Mirror. Things that have no internal value. In those days, it was tracks. They pack field. Hmm. Today we're talking about what is separating you from the love of Christ. Part five. That means we have gone, done part one, we have done part two, we have done part three, we have done part four. Today is part five. Shall we pray? Most precious Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, God of honor, power, might, and majesty. The God that knows our beginning and our ending. Child, we have beginning and we have an end. Father, we have been here. We have been introduced into the planet Earth. And the purpose of introducing us is to prepare and be like your son Jesus and come and meet you in eternity. Mighty man of Allah, a lot of things have taken our attention away. Father, the fashions of this world have taken our attention away. The hairstyle we make and fashion have taken us away. Cars have taken us away. Houses have taken us away. Jobs have taken us away. What we're going to eat have taken us away. What we're going to drink have taken us away. Father, restore us to yourself. Bring us, O oh Lord, that that first love we have, that first love we have, that first love we have in you and with you, that it shall be restored. My King and my God. That we will there still be the children of God we used to be. The tongue speaking children of God. Children of authority and power. Hey! Restore us to God. That we will be who you want us to be. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you Jesus. To God our Lord and our Father be our glory. What is separating you from the love of God? Part 5. That's what we're going to discuss today by the divine grace of God. What is separating you, beloved? Child of God, what is separating you? <sighs> May God show us mercy. We have to consider a lot of things that is possible separating somebody from the love of God. We have seen those things. And today, we are going to see more. Today, we will be discussing about things to come. Last time, we discussed height. Is it height that is separating you from the love of God? Today, we are discussing things to come. 
things to come, including future of the fear. The fear of the future. Future and this fear. Or fear of the future. That is things to come. There are a lot of people that have so worried themselves. Hey, supposing I die without a child. Supposing I die without marriage. Supposing I die without passing this examination. Supposing this, this, that. If you die without getting married and you live a holy life, you still go to heaven. If you die without marriage and you live a clean life, you will still go to heaven. If you die without passing that exam, you will still go to heaven if you live a clean life. All these things that you're worried about, you can go to heaven without them. You can still make heaven without them. Be love of God. Be love of God. Be love of God. The Bible, the word of God say, well, we're talking, they say, what is separating you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Oh, my God. Mm. What is it that will separate you? The vow you took, the decision you took in those days. What is separating you? Please share this message. I just want you to share this message. Share it now. Those of you, you've been doing a great work and a great encouragement to us by sharing this message to a lot of people. You know, because of you, after preaching, you see that you have spoken to 3,000 people. Wow. And before you know, that's how people kept sharing 7,000, 10,000 people have had the message. And more and more. What a wonderful people you are. What a wonderful people, you, you, you know. What a wonderful great man you are. What a wonderful people you are. May God be your keeper. Sustenance, protection, and preserver. Now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Things to come. You're afraid of future. You're afraid of a nothing. You are thinking to... Things that has not even come. That was the problem of Abraham. That was the problem of Abraham. He was thinking of things to come. Supposing I die without a child. He never knowing that he that promised is faithful. God has said it and God is going to do it. It is not Abraham's waiting. It is not Abraham's waiting to have a child that made him hero or father of faith. No. What made him father of faith was after God has rebuked him, after he has realized his mistake, that God said it and he has eventually done it. Whatever thing you tell me from today, I will do it. And God told him, eh, hey, whatever thing I tell you to do, you will do it. Or you go and sacrifice the child. And Abraham took the child immediately to go and sacrifice the child. That what made him the father of faith. Because he said, even if God allowed the child to be sacrificed and killed, he's able again to resurrect him. He's able again to bring him back to life. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Supposing I don't get this visa. Supposing I don't get this job. All these things are mine. We are only marking time here on earth. As you're marking at the appointed time, phew, you go. The mortal millionaire will go. Hmm? Oh, the richest, richest everywhere will go. That man, that woman that married and have a lot of children, she will still go. That man that fair, that broken your heart and fair, he will not die. He will still go. But forgive him before he dies. What is separating you from the love of God? God wants us to be made in the image of Jesus. He wants us to be made in the perfect true image of God. He wants us to be made in the perfect image of holiness and righteousness. Divine image of God. That's what God wants us to be made into. Divine image of God. That's what God desires of us. And that is what God is looking for us. Hallelujah. What are we trying to say? Be made in the divine image of God himself. God wants us to be like Jesus of Nazareth. He wants us to be everything good and real and powerful. Hallelujah. Jesus must be honored and must be honored and must be honored. So do all you could in your life to be a seed of God and a seed of righteousness. 
May God's name be glorified in our lives. As things to come should be handled by God. Those things that are killing you already, make you to live in fears, make you to live in worries, make you to live in anxiety, make you to be crying day in, day out. There are people you will see their eyes, this is what happened to you. You say, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about this, and then there's nothing I could do. I started crying. Why are you crying? Crying, there was a day I had some need, an issue, I started crying. And the Lord spoke to me and said, son, crying is a sign of defeat. You felt you've been defeated. That's why you are crying over situation. I said, God, I will not cry again over situation. I will command my situation. Look at what the Bible said about this future you're already afraid of. Things to come. Who knows? Will my husband divorce me? Is he, is he interested in another lady? Is my wife interested in another man? Supposing I have another baby girl again, what I'm supposed I want to have is a baby boy. You don't have feet. You have asked for it, wait for it, receive it. Moreover, children are good. Children are children. Oh, whatever one God give you, rejoice and accept it with love and openness of heart. Stop living in in, in, in worries. Things to come, and the thing that will not preoccupy your mind. There's a difference between planning, a planning ahead, yes, than then being troubled by things to come. Let's get to Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 from verse 10. This is telling you there's nothing new under the earth. There's nothing new. Oh, this guy is new. There's nothing new under the earth. That's what the Bible said. Do you know one funny thing? Whenever a sickness comes, they say that this sickness is new. This sickness is a new sickness. It's not new. Go to dictionary. You still see the name. Then why is it new? And dictionary have written it two, three, four hundred years ago. And you say it is a new sickness. It's not new. There's nothing new under the earth. <laughs> when HIV come out, uh, uh, the virus, you go and check it there. You see it. Say, so, Wow. Huh? This thing is that, but why is the sickness new? Ecclesiastes chapter 1 from verse 10. Is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. It has been already of old time, which was before us. It has been already. Wow. He said, it has been already before us. It has been there from the time immemorial. Damn, there's nothing new under the earth. Nothing is new. That thing you felt that is new is not new. That thing you felt is so new is not new. That thing you felt that is so this is not. There is nothing new under the earth. That's what the Bible, the Word of God said. He said, nothing is new under the planet Earth. That thing you felt that is, new, is not new. That car is, new, is not new. In your eye might be new. It has been existing. There's nothing new under the Earth. That trouble, ah, the, this is a new trouble. This is a new, it has been there. I was reading with a different version to a young lady. Uh, I was reading Jeremiah for the young lady. I was reading the book of Jeremiah for a young lady. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30. Where God was talking about painting of the eyes. And the painting mascara. I said, ah! I say it has been there. It is not new. It has been there. It's not new. It has been there. It has been of old. There's nothing new under the earth. Hallelujah. Then, the only thing you can say that is new is that when you're born, reborn. When the Holy Spirit of God possesses your mind and possesses your thought, possesses your idea, you are reborn. You become a new brand person inside. The new you will control. Every other thing happened around. 
and waiting. There's nothing new under the earth. So when you're focusing your mind, who knows what is going to happen? No matter what is going to happen, it is not new. There are kings and king and king that have built and built and built. How many wives will somebody marry now that's a new thing? Solomon, marry 700, have another 300 concubine. 1,000. So when somebody is marrying 20, 30, 40, 50, it's still not new. So don't kill yourself with the future. Don't kill yourself what is going to happen. Hey, supposing I die without building a house, you still go to heaven. It's the will of God for you to articulate well. You might have made a lot of mistakes in your life. Forget it. There's nothing new. Hey, I have a very bad wife. It's not new. John Weasley had one. He, ma she, he managed the wife and still was able to make heaven. I have a very bad husband. So many people have had a bad husband and still remain in Christ and still make heaven. That's nothing new under the earth. Things to come. Things to come. Things to come. You see, a lot of people have been separated from love of Christ from things to come. My prayer is that let things to come not separate you from the love of God. That zeal you have in Christ, that beginning you have in Christ, that grace you have in Christ, that love you have in Christ, continue with it. Move ahead with it. Progress with it. Live with it. And you have every cause to say, Lord, I loved you. Do you know when the love of Christ is in your life? Whenever they sing this song, I love my Jesus, you say, I love him, my Jesus, I love. Oh, my Jesus, I love you. Amen. When they ask a question, you love my Jesus, you say, I love him, my Jesus, I love the my Jesus, I love him. Amen. But when you're thinking of the future, you don't know what the future is already holding. Abraham thought he was a baby boy. Therefore, he has to go and do it in his way. He concluded when God has not concluded. Don't conclude yet. Many of us have a very beautiful future, but with anxiety, with thought and this and that, the devil wants to destroy you with thinking in your future. And then begin to give you ideas of what to do, where to go, and powers to consult. And you begin to go around, begin to consult negative powers, and at the end of the day, it will afflict your life. It will affect you. No. Don't let things to come. Who knows? Tomorrow now, these people will be richer than me. Forget about that. Things to come. Why have we concluded on that? Are they the future holders? It's only God that holds your future. There's nothing new under that. There's no bad language they have told you that have not been spoken on anybody. Maybe you don't have a baby already and people so speak bad words unto you. It will not get to the level Penina spoke to Hannah. But what happened at the end of the day? The judge of the whole earth. A woman married in the same compound with you is dealing with you. It is not the level that Rachel dealt with to his elder sister. It's not at that level. But she continued. She continued. Even the husband will look at the eyes of the elder sister to Rachel and say, you know, I don't love you. You are not my choice. You are not my love. Rachel is my love. Rachel is my everything. Leah, you are not my love. Leah, you know I don't love you. Leah, you are so ugly. Maybe that man that married you, that admire you, that adore you, have overnight toned and said, you are this, you are this, you are evil. And you are trying to know what to do. You are trying to go to somewhere. A woman felt that her husband is no more loving her. The woman said, my husband is no more in love. I'm going to do something. She went and prepared charm. They went there and said, ah, your husband, you don't know what men are doing. Come and prepare chamo. So that by the time you prepare the chamo, your husband will be running after you. Your husband will love you so much and so highly. 
And the lady foolishly went and prepared the charm. They said, you see this one, put it in the food of your husband. When you see it, he will be attracted. He will be charmed. This is love portion. And the lady foolishly prepared the husband meal, brought out the food, kept it somewhere, opened the bottle, and spread it on top to go and give to the husband. Not knowing that somebody was spying her. You see the same devil that brought the suggestion. It's the same devil that planted the person that spied her. That's a bad devil. God cannot do that. What happened? She was caught red-handed. Even with the bottle, she said, no, I only prepared it for him to love me. For, they said, are you sure? I said, no, no, no. This thing does not kill. It doesn't kill at all. It's just to our love to be. If love is not of God, devil has no love. Are you hearing me? Devil has no love. They force her and say, you must eat the food. If what I'm saying is true, if what I'm saying is real, I eat the food. She said, boldly, she took the food and started eating. And she ate the food. I said, did I die? They said, let's wash out. Two, three days, she started having mental case. Become mad and become, uh, become mental. Mental drained. At the end of the day, that was the end of that marriage. Because she was planning for the future. Many of us are planning for the future we will not even see. Start getting troubled about that future. Things to come. Things to come. Who knows? Some of us are 30. Some of us are in their 40s. And they're thinking of when I get to 80. When I get to 70. What will I do? How will I do it? They may not know them are going by 50. They don't know. They may be going. I was busy those days preparing for 87 years. But was it not at 54? That I was asked why I come home. Preparing for the future you will not meet. Prepare now. Prepare now. Prepare now for internet. Better prepare now. Tomorrow might be too late. This is time for us to make peace with Jehovah. So that you, whatever thing that happened, you tell yourself that there is nothing new under the earth. There's nothing new under the earth. I still want to let you know about the future you are afraid of, about the future you are thinking, about the future that keep jumping your mind, making your heart shake, this and this and that, that, that. By the time you become older, by the time this happened, by the time this happened, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? And so many people are busy compromising. Very, very, very busy compromising. Another thing I want to tell you about things to come is that your future is not in the hands of the devil. If your future had been in the hands of the devil, you would have been so, you know, fidgeting and shaking. But I want to tell you that your future is not in the hands of the devil. Look at where your future is. In the book of Isaiah chapter 41, from verse 22, your future is not in the hands of the devil. That's a good news. Good news for you. Your future is not in the hands of the devil. Woo, hallelujah. My future is not in the hands of the devil. He doesn't know my future. I love that song that says, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone, hallelujah, because I know He holds my future. My life is what I live in joy because He lived. Because He lived, you can face tomorrow. Because He lived, your tomorrow will be a better one. Because He lived, you meet a joyous tomorrow, a glad tomorrow, a happy tomorrow. Your tomorrow will not intimidate you. You will intimidate your tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't let the devil and power of darkness to intimidate you with your future. Tell him my future is secured in the hand of Jehovah. My future is secured in the hand of man of war. My future is secured. I am not thinking of what the devil is saying. I am not moved by what the devil is saying. He has so whispered in my heart. He has given me bad dream about my future. I am not moved by all this thing. I am moved by what God said. And God said, because he lived, I will also live. Because he is living, you will live. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 41 from verse number 22. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them and know the letter and know the letter end of them. Or declare us things to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter. That we may know that you are God's. Yea, do good or do evil. That we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, you are of nothing and your works of nothing. An abomination you see that you set you. Oh my God. You see what God is saying? The, the, the whosoever that chooses this negative God, he chooses an abomination. Palm readers, they come and read your palm. They read your palm, read your palm, and from your palm, look at your palm and start talking to you. You don't know that taking your destiny. If God permits all this year, I may spend time and preach about destiny destroyers or destiny killers. A lot of people who are existing today, their destiny has been taken away from them. But in any way, your destiny has been taken, let it be restored in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, mighty man of valor, to him be all that glory. Look at what the Bible said, I have, from the way we're reading in Isaiah chapter 41 from 25. I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come. From the rising of the sun shall he come upon, shall he come upon my name, shall he call upon my name, and he shall call, call upon princes and upon matter, and as the potter threaded clay, who had declared from the beginning that we may know, and before time, that we may say he is righteous. Yea, there is none that show it. Yea, there is none that declare it. Yea, there is none that hear it your words. The faith shall say to Zion, Behold, hallelujah, behold them. I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. For I beheld, and there was no man, even among them, and there was no counselor. And when I asked of them, could answer a word. God said, there's no wise man among them. It's me that declare from the beginning. I make a declaration. Before you were born, God has spoken good about you. Before you were born, you have been mapped out into greatness and goodness of who God wants you to be. Yeah, you hearing me? Before you came into the planet Earth, God has designed you, gave you the kind of nose you should have, the kind of eye you should have, the kind of ear you should have, the kind of mouth, yet he says, and you don't have imitation. Then the devil wants to make you a third class citizen when you don't have imitation, when you're first class before God. Many of us have inferiority complex. They begin to think about their future. They begin to think about this and I am not thinking about my future because my future is secured. My future is in the hand of great Jehovah. Some people say if I give him money, he will lock me and bind my future because your future is in their hand. That's why you're afraid to give them money because your future is, you believe your future could be afflicted and attacked. For me, I have a confidence in Jehovah. My future is in the hands of the Lord. No man will quench it. No power will stop it. For God has spoken good about me and what he says is final. And that is all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will also leave. Because he's alive. Because he's holding me. He's holding my future. One song we sing here said, I am not holding the rock, but the rock is holding me. I am not the one holding myself. I didn't bring myself here on earth. I didn't get born again by my power or by my grace. It is by the divine grace of God. Then why should I be afraid of things to come? One woman like that, in the Queen's lineage in England, she was so discouraged, she was afraid of the future, she was afraid of so many things. To understand that she planned to hang herself and die. Her mistress started talking to her, started talking to her, started talking to her. And when she the mistress discovered that the girl is downcasted, the girl was crying every minute. The devil whispered one word or the other against in her mind. What have the devil whispered to you that you have not chosen a part of the word of God to counter the devil? Eh? 
The devil will keep on speaking to your mind. But the one you absorb will trouble you, and that is the worries we are talking about. But whenever the devil speaks, you tell him you're a liar. Look at what the Bible said about me. Look at what the Bible said. Bible said, because he lived, I shall live. I will not die. I will live and talk goodness of the Lord. I am my children that the Lord have given to me. Well, for signs and for wonder. Because you don't read the Bible, because you don't know the word of God. That is why you are easily troubled by every one word. Before you understand it, you become moody. You begin to give devil thought. You begin to give devil chance. Bible said, giving no opportunity to walk of unrighteousness. Why are you giving the devil chance to brood over and think over what the devil has said about you? You don't know somebody have a final say in your life. That's the God that have the final say in your life. And that God said, I will not leave you. Wherever you go, I shall go with you. That's some God said, I am the Lord. I healed you. I am your healer. Before you become sick, you have been healed already. And there's some God said, he sent his word and his word have healed you. And there's some God said, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health. Why are you afraid of the future? When you have a future designer, when you have a future holder, when you have somebody that the future is rolled in his hand, when you know somebody that sees the beginning and your ending. Then, why not trust him that holds the future? And you yourself, you're afraid of the future while it's somebody sold in the future. There's nothing new under the earth. Your future is not in the hands of the devil. Even your fathers and mother have handed you over to one demon of one power of darkness or other. Now, Lord, your future is in the hand of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Living God. That is where your future is. Come on, rejoice and begin to liberate yourself and say, Hallelujah! I was afraid before until I discover that my future is in the hand of Jehovah, that my future is in the hand of the Most High God, that my future is in the hand of Emmanuel, that my future is in the hand of Ancient of the Day, that my future is in the hand of Great I Am that I have, that my future is in the hand of rock of ages. Hallelujah! I don't need those struggles. All I need to trust and obey. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Beloved, trust and obey. There's no way again to be happy in Jesus. Because you don't trust him, because you don't obey him, the devil know you don't trust, the devil know you don't obey, he begins to hit you from every angle. God may tell you those things you feel that is impossible. If he tells you the impossible to do, that means he wants you to be an impossible doer. When he tells you things impossible to do, he then know that there's a grace enough. Moses was arguing with him, I'm a stammerer, I am this and that, oh, I am impossible doer, I can do those impossibilities, stop reminding me this, Moses was still talking, God said, okay, 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 I will share your duty, you will not be the full man with the full blessing, okay, you, your brother will be your voice speaker. Oh, your brother will be a voice, the ministry of Moses was divided into two, Aaron have a part, and Moses have a part, what am I trying to say? Stop thinking about the future. There are some ladies who are yet not married. You don't know what God has planned for you. Every month you cut one month. Every year you see one year. Your face begins to change. Sometimes when you have not taken bath, the devil will show you a wrinkle on your forehead. That might be the wrinkle that might attract your true husband. Are you hearing me? Stop getting worried about tomorrow. Stop getting worried. He said, what is separating you from the love of God? You said at the age of 35, you must have built a house, have a car. At the age of so-so-so, you must have gotten married. At the age of 40, you must have concluded everything about childbed and child bearing. But look at you. The age you attend, you are not even married. And the devil used that to squeeze you. It's not important. Let your mind not be squeezed. Don't be afraid. Let the love of God dwell richly in you. Let the future and what is happening, let it not trouble your mind. The Bible said, is it things to come? Is it things to come? That will be the thing that will separate you from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus. No. May it not separate you. May it not separate you. May it not separate you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the love of Christ rule over your life. Let the love of Christ rule over you. Hallelujah. I love that song that says, Hallelujah, Christ has conquered Satan. Hallelujah, Christ has conquered Satan. 
Look, let me tell you. When you're so discouraged with a lot of words from the devil, he pump you, you never pass you with this one, your boss tell you this one, your colleague tell you this one, go home! Lift up your hand and begin to sing praise. Don't pray. Begin to worship God and say, God, I know. I know who you are. I know my Redeemer live it. I know my Redeemer live it. I know my Redeemer live it. He live it forevermore. This was the word that helped Job in his situation. He said, I know my Redeemer live it. He made a statement that said, I know God is passing me through an experience. When he finished purifying me, I shall be purer than gold. Esther said, the future for me to be afraid that my people will get. I will take this risk of future. I am going to go into praying and fasting. I will do what a man can do. I will allow God to do what God can do. Beloved, do what man can do. Allow God. What can man do? Man will have faith. Man will have trust. Man will have confidence. Man will praise God. Man will believe God. These are the things man will do. And God himself will be the miracle worker. He will be the one to do the miracle. Let things to come. Not be the thing that will separate you from the love of Christ. There's one sister we had in those days in the fellowship. She was very elderly. By the time I was still not up to 20, she was in her 40s. You know, this lady was there. She was not married. A very happy woman. A teacher. You know, everything. She will be happy. She will be happy. She will be smiling. She was beautiful. She was tall, elegant. But no husband was coming her way. And before you understand it, all her age in the fellowship got married and some of them become she was that they got married she was that they begin to bear their children but funny thing is that whenever any woman of her age or whatever would deliver she would go and see that woman congratulate the woman buy gift for the woman and believe in god for her own it was never a worry to her and you see that all the elderly women in the youth whatever they all went off and the mama said Let's not continue allowing her to be in the youth. Come over to women. So when women are doing things, she'll be involved. She was not married, but they carried her over because they know what she felt. We saw her, but today she has seen our children and our grandchildren. She was not married. It's not in our making. The Lord have allowed her to be. To him be all the glory. And the sister was following them like that. And before I understand it, I have left the fellowship of scripture, you know, in those days. Went to Bible college, finished. I was running the ministry. And one day there was a great gathering. Vehicles work. I said, what is happening? They said, that sister is getting married. I said, ah, ah. I thought, old, old age. She was never worried. She has a God that is a planner of her life. God has planned your life. All your prayers is God. That plan you have for me, let me fit in into your system. Let me fit in into your plan. Let me not live in worries in the morning, worry in the afternoon, worry this and that. Oh, when you get too much worried, people will lead you into sin, into evil, into unrighteousness. You begin to put your hand where you're not supposed to put your hand because you're living in worry because of car, because of money, because of house, because of marriage, because of children, and because of other things. What is separating you from the love of God that is in Christ? He said, is it height? Or today, is it things to come? You are thinking. And before I understand it, after they married, the lady went to London for her honeymoon. How many of them in the fellowship have even crossed outside Nigeria? How much more having honeymoon in London? And so what happened? He said, he's marrying one of the commissioners. Oh my God, who is a born again child of God? That the wife died years ago, and that one relaxed and said, God, I will marry, but the sister will come. And eventually, the sister had been in Emo State, and eventually was transferred to Abia State. He may say, oh God, why this thing now? I've been in Emo State, yeah? Why am I being transferred? All things are working together for your good. Learn how to believe God. Learn how to agree with God. Some of the transfer are miracles from the Lord. They are the paved way. Most of the things that are happening to you is to connect you to where you belong. Give Him praise and worship Him. There's somebody that is listening to me. For some time, now things have been hard and difficult for you. Do you know what God said I should tell you? God said, if this is not your state, this is not your level. God said, I should tell you why things are hard and difficult for you. is for you to know that there are poor people that still exist. The moment he takes you to another level this time around, please, please, please remember the poor often. God said, if you learn this lesson as, oh, so there are people that must suffer before they eat. There are people that must cry before they eat. Oh, oh, show me mercy, show me mercy, show me mercy. The moment you realize this, hardship will stop in your life. 
Just for some time, things all turn upside down. You are not having money. You got you. They were flowing the money. You're not counting money. But today, you can't boast of any. That's to tell you that money have wings. They might wing and they fly away. But I decree, let them fly back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. God said, I should tell you that this thing is happening simply because he wanted to know that there are poor people around. That grace was there. You were making the money to flow. You thought it is by power or might. The Lord said, so that you know that all by grace of God. It will come back. Are you hearing me? My Shandara, my mama, my mama. The month we're entering is the month of September. You will see supremacy of God in your life again. The person I'm talking about. You will testify. You will testify. I know you will remember us too. Amen. Good thing will come. Good thing will come. Good thing will come. A song is singing in my heart. It said, it's an evil song that says, Oh man, that the joyous, joyous thing for you has happened. It has happened. The great joyous thing for your life has happened. It will happen by the month of September. The person I'm talking about. The Lord said, I con I'm going to conclude every program about what you're passing through by the month of September. By month of August, I've concluded it. By the month of September, the door shall be open again. You will testify. Make sure you call me and give me testimony. And we will laugh together and give God a praise. Oh my God. What is separating you from the love of God? Some people have given God debt. God, look at me. I am get if I get at five years and I don't marry between that five years and forty, if I don't get married, Lord, I will do this, I will do this. Some ladies said, God, if I wait till the age of 35, I don't get married, I will go and be pregnant. At least I'll have one baby, I will have two babies. Chai, born again. Chai, child of God. Is this baby, is this children more important than the kingdom where you're going to? Hmm? Is it more important than the kingdom of God? Oh, may God show us mercy. May God show us mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May God show us mercy. Point three, remember I've told you, point one is that nothing is due under the head. Point two is that your future is not in the hands of the devil. Point three is that only God knows your future. Hallelujah. Only God knows your future. God knows my future. And the same God is my father. He is my friend. He is close to me. I will give him praise. I will sing to his holy name. I will not only worship God with my mouth. I will worship him with my heart. I will worship him with my life. I will give him and surrender everything that Jehovah Lord wants me to surrender. Father, I surrender my thought, my ideas, and my will. I surrender totality of everything to you. Receive to your own glory. Amen. What a great God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Bible says, heaven and earth adore him, even the angel bow before him. He's a mighty God, he's not be glorified. Let's get to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Book of Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Isaiah 42, verse 9, the Bible says, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they are spread forth, I tell you of them. Hallelujah. 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 Below the former thing are gone. The former sorrows are gone. The former tears are gone. The former crying are gone. The former sickness are gone. The former poverty are gone. The Lord said, Behold, a new thing do I declare. The Lord have declared a new thing in the life of somebody from the month of September 2020. Something new will happen to you. Something glorious will happen to you. Something joyous will happen to you. Something edifying will happen to you. Something uplifting will happen to you. A great testimony will come into your mouth and you will say, God, I thank you. You will be first to testify in the month of September in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What a great God and what a loving Father we serve. God said, he knows your future. He's the only God that knows your future. Behold, the former things have come to pass. Let the former things come. Your former poverty, your former sicknesses, your former everything. Let them come to pass. The Lord said, behold, he decree a new thing, a new beginning, a new thing. The hardship that been facing you is gone and gone forever. A new beginning, a new zeal, a new joy, new glory of God shall be manifested in your life again. You will lift up your hand 
heaven and glory of God will be there. You will need them to pray and you're praying for hours. You will open your mouth and so preaching the word of God. You may ask yourself, am I the one preaching this word? Is it me that is talking all these things? Hey, well, God, I thank you. That thing which you cannot do before, you begin to do them again. That which look impossible will be possible before you. God will lift it to another rim of life. God will lift it to another height of life. Where everything will be possible, where everything will be agreeable, where everything will be matchable, where you say, wow, I have a God who never fell. I have a father who never fell me. I have a savior who we never fell. Who never fell. I say who we never fell. Forevermore. I have a daddy that can never fall. I have a savior who we never fell. I have a daddy who we never fell. Who we never fell. Who we never fell. Forevermore. You that is listening to me, you have been having tears of sorrow. Tears of sorrow. The Lord will cleanse your tears of sorrows in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a problem only you know. You don't know who to talk to. You are afraid. When I'm talking to people, they will carry me around. You are enduring it alone. The Lord said, I should tell you, He will share the problem with you. He will take away the problem. And a new beginning will begin. A new beginning will start in your life. Stop being afraid anymore of tomorrow, of the future. Can I complete my house in the village? Can I do this? Can I get married? Can this happen to me? Because he holds your future, all things are possible to him that believeth. Believe! 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 It is possible with God. Believe! You can walk out of that sickness. Believe! You will not die in that sickness. I mean you, 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 you. You will not die in that sickness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Healing will come. Your story must change. Your story must change. Your story must change. And God of heaven and earth will be glorified and praised and honored and adored in your life. There shall be dancing. There shall be rejoicing. And we will glorify the name of Emmanuel. We will say thank Thank you, Father. We will say thank you, Savior of the world. We glorify and magnify his name. May his name alone be honored at all. Worship and praise forevermore. Hallelujah. Child of God, rejoice. Yay! Hallelujah! Christ has conquered Satan. Oh, keep rejoicing. Christ has conquered Satan. Hallelujah! Christ has conquered Satan. Hallelujah! Christ has conquered Satan. Hallelujah! Christ has conquered Satan. I say, children of God, rejoice for Christ has conquered Satan. Hallelujah! Christ has conquered Satan. Hallelujah! Christ has conquered Satan. That day he conquered was the day you conquered. He conquered for you and gave you victory. Jesus conquered the world and gave me victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. Victory to live for tomorrow. Hey, riba, ba, 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 ba. Victory to trade on your business. Victory to walk in that place. Victory all over. You don't know you're right, a child of God. Somebody prayed after the walk, after praying, God directed him to a company. God directed him to a particular company. And at the end of the day, you know, he was working, he was progressing. There was so a lot of envy, a lot of jealous. And he went and said, God, there's a lot of envy in this company. There is a lot of envy, Lord. What are you saying? Do I get out of this company? The Lord said, I am the one that planted you there. The MD, the chairman is not the one that planted you. I am the Lord that planted you here. What is separating you from the love of God? He said, Lord, your God that planted me. He went again. The manager threatened him. I'm going to sack you. He went to the office of a manager and said, with due respect, sir, you cannot sack me. The manager said what? He even said, the MD of this company and the chairman of this company cannot even sack me. Ah, ah, they were all, while they were talking, the MD was walking and they took him to the office of the chairman and said, repeat what you said. He said, I am here by a divine minded. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God, none of you can sack me. I have a mandate to be in this place. Anytime God says, no, I will leave this place. I will live in honor and not in dishonor. I'm not afraid of future. I'm not afraid of tomorrow. I am not afraid of what is going to happen to me. Fear of tomorrow cannot make me to run away from God. My God holds tomorrow. My God holds my future. 
My future is not in the hand of that doctor you're working with. It's not in that hand of the owner of the company. It's not in the hand of the government you're working for. Your future is in the hands of Jehovah. And God of the final say, he controls the heart of that doctor, control the heart of the king, control the heart of government. He is a controller. Mashara Mama. And they say, the MD was annoying. The chairman of the company was annoying. The director, they were all annoyed. And they had a meeting. We are going to deal with him. And by tomorrow, we are going to have a symbol. And then at the end of the day, they had a symbol. The flame one who assembled all the workers. The chairman himself who wrote a letter. Who wrote and to give the director. Oh, I read one of the directors. And the director read. <laughs> he just presented the letter. They were all having one mind. He said, well, some of you are hurting, some of you are stupid, some of you religion have made you mad. Somebody is not even afraid to talk to the director. Yesterday, look at what happened, and behold, the, 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 the chairman of the company have written. The chairman was there, the wife was there. They were, who is suing the company? They were there. He started reading. He said, because of the incident that happened yesterday, I, the chairman of this company, have taken the following resolution. They, uh, he mentioned the name of the man from henceforth. <sighs> he kept quiet. The shaman said, Read it out. Has her father been appointed as one of the directors of this company? Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me tell you when God loves you, it doesn't matter who hates you, just attract the love of God. Attract the love of God. When God loves you, it doesn't matter who hates you. Hmm. What happened? The young man, an engineer. That day he made a statement. One of the engine got broken down. And the brothers part, they say it cannot be worked, it must be replaced. It will cost about 36 million. The young man came to work. God gave him a revelation of what to do. He went to that engine and started working and the engine started serving. The director said for this. Uh, the, 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 the chairman said for this, you're going to be. There's an, you're going to be one of the directors. There's an ability in you. There's an ability in you that is disability to other people. Ask God, let me tell you. When the ability in you that is inability of other people, eh, that ability God has put in you, that is the grace we're talking about. It will manifest in your area of specialization. And none can be found like you, doing it better than you. My prayers is that. I'm not competing with any man. But let none do it better than me. I want to be a better Christian than any other body. If you're a nurse, be a better nurse than any other body. If you're an engineer, tell God, I want to be an engineer with excellence. Are you hearing me? Wherever you are, say, God, let the best in me manifest. That was excellent spirit we're finding in Daniel. That was what made him a different person from the magician and from every other person in the land. Excellent spirit. I release the grace of excellent spirit right now. Let excellent spirit be released on somebody now. Receive excellent spirit in your field. Release, receive excellent spirit wherever you are. In that your field of endeavor, in that place of your specialization, receive an excellent spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Take, go to that place where you're working, get back tomorrow and say, because I'm a child of God, because I'm working in this place, I take over. There cannot be better than me. Bible says there was none better than Daniel, Meshach, Chedrach, and about Nego because they are the children of the most high God, the God of signs and wonders. But you're afraid. Who knows? If they suck me tomorrow, who is sucking you? Nobody is sucking you. Fear in you is what is sucking you. Are you hearing me? Because she lives, you confess tomorrow. I confess tomorrow. We can give our testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. God is interested in us. He is the mighty man of our Lord. God wants to reveal your future to you. Have you said, God, show me my future? It's because you have not seen your future. That's why you're getting worried and listening. If you have, God has shown your future. God, what am I going to be? What will my next 10 years be like? When God has shown you your next 10 years, you didn't know, you didn't know that you're not going to die in the next 10 years. Do you know that? Yes, you're not going to die in your next 10 years. There was a man who was very sick. 
he was taken to the U.S. for medical, uh, whatever, uh, medical treatment. He went to the U.S. They said this man is going to die in seven days' time. Oh. So they passed him with the next available flight and brought him to Nigeria, Port Harcourt precisely. And they, he came and told his friend, look at what I was told. And the man remembered his company. He remembered this, remembered this all over. He said, Chai, I'll leave this into eternity. Chai. Mm. The friend he told went and brought one man of God. The one man of God came there and started praying. And started praying. And when the man of God left, the following night, the man, the man he prayed for started sleeping. He saw an angel that came to him. He said, I've restored your life. I'm giving you another 30 years to live. You will not die. Fear me and love me. The man got up in the morning, could not see the sickness, rushed to treat the, the checkup. This is powerful, this is powerful, this is powerful. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Stop relying on medical report. Rely on the heavenly report. My doctor said, my doctor said. You have not told people my creator said. Eh? Your doctor is a cold human being that will equally die. Tell them that my creator said. My maker said. The owner of heaven and earth said. Stop quoting doctors. Begin to quote God. The man becomes strong and heady. I know there's a package 30 years for him. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. God wants to reveal your future. That's point four. Can you pray and say, God, show me my future. I want to see what my future looks like, O oh God. In the book of Isaiah chapter 45, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 11. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hand. Come and do me. Have you asked God about your future? God, how am I going to end up? Have you asked God about your tomorrow? You're only living in fear, fidgeting. He's supposing if I don't get married. Supposing my husband don't come back. Supposing this my child they die. Supposing the God say, ask me questions. God says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker. Ask me of things to come. Eh? Ask me of things to come. Ask me about your future. Ask me about your tomorrow. Hmm? Concerning my sons and concerning the works, my, concerning my son and concerning the works of my hands, command you me. God, if you say command me, so God, I command you, reveal my future. I command you. God said, command me concerning the works of my hand, and He said, command you me here now. Hmm? Command you me. Ask me with authority. Ask me with every assurance, I will reveal your future. When you know where you're going to, a man of God had been told, God told him, look at where you're going to, look at where you're going to, look at what you're going to, you will die so, so, so age. And he preached a powerful message somewhere. They caught him somewhere and said, Mr. Preacher, Mr. Preacher, we're going to kill you now. They took a, a, a gun and they wanted to shoot. He told him, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So that you don't think you make a mistake in shooting me. I have a mandate of somebody somewhere. The maker of life have given me mandate. Are you hearing me? So I'm not persuaded. I'm not troubled. I'm not living in fear. Look, that you're gone. Don't say it doesn't shoot. shoot eh? The man opened his heart. Opened his heart and said, look at the center of my heart. Look at it. Put your gun there. They put the gun there. Press the trigger not ever. Press the trigger not ever. Press the trigger not ever. Brought out the gun. Shoot it. Bah! It went off in the air. They put it back there. Shoot, nothing happened. Shoot, nothing happened. Say, ah, ah. They shoot again. Nothing happened. They put it, they, 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 they shoot again. Quack, 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 quack. They bring it back to the heart. Nothing happened. They shoot in the air. Quack, 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 quack. They drop the gun. The man told them, I'm a covenant child. I won't die a common death. I will not die anyhow. I am not fidgeting. I don't live in fear. I have a covenant of the maker of the heaven and earth. He's the one that gave the producer of this gun sense to produce the gun. So you see, that's why I'm not dying anyhow. And I will not die anyhow. You will not die anyhow. You will not die a common death in the name of Jesus Christ. You will die a fulfilled man. You will die a fulfilled woman. Command you me. Ask me God. What will my 10 years look like? Oh God. God is not a man of secrets. 
He can reveal things to you, but there are things he will reveal to you. He will ask you to keep them secret. Are you hearing me? He will reveal those things to you and ask you to keep them secret. Command you me. Many of us don't know how they are going to end. They don't know what their tomorrow will look like. But we say, I have a father who never fell. I have a God who never fell. Yes. Jesus knew why he came. He knew his time. Look at the time he spent here on earth. At the age of 30, he started. He knew he had three more years ahead to finish. He started and he finished faithful. Or faithfully. St. Paul, after finishing, even St. Peter, he said, I've run the rest. Eh? I've run the rest. I kept the faith. It's now a time to put on the earthly tabernacle. I want to go and meet my maker. They know their mandates. He, he surrendered to be killed. When they were telling Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. If you go there, Paul said, that is where I have the greatest work. Oh. Even when the prophet prophesied, all these things, prophets are prophesying and prophesying. You are living by the words of prophets instead of living by the word of God. Be careful. Prophet Agabus prophesied. Plus Philip, that have, uh, how many daughters that can prophesy? They prophesy. So Paul said, you are not talking to me. Jerusalem, have I decided to go? To Jerusalem will I go? And he went to Jerusalem and preached to a lot of people. From there, he preached to many people, including King Nero. And then he was Nero. And then eventually, he went to, Jer he, he went to Rome. He took the gospel wide. He fulfilled his mandate. He's not afraid to die. Those of you who felt he, you are just like a, a grass and around the bush that you can be cut down anyhow. It's not true. It's not true. You are a, a seed. A, 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 you are like a seed planted beside rivers. Have that confidence in you. Anything that happens to you happens for a reason. Ask God, why did it happen? And God will tell you. There's something I posted to some people. Somebody was asking God a question. Go, why are you passing me through a troubled sea? The Lord said, I'm passing you through a troubled sea because your enemy cannot swim. <laughs> you may think it's fire now. Your enemy knows about fire. He has fire extinguisher. And God said, let me pass you through sea. You know he cannot swim. Allow the will of God to prevail in your life. Allow God number one position in your life. Huh? Allow God. And you see a better happy days in your life. Stop struggling with him. Stop fighting the will of God. What a friend we have in Jesus. The Lord said, command you me. He said, say, thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker. Hey. Ask me of things to come. Yeah? Things to come. Concerning my sons. When he means son, he means men and women. Bible says, when they receive it, they give his power to become children of God. Or sons of God. We are walking and God is there to help us. Things to come. Let them not be the thing that will separate you from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus. But may you have that confidence in Jesus today. May you have, to have, that, that, have, that, have that confidence in Jesus today that Jesus is all in all. Jesus is all we are supposed to have. And then, because he's there for us, we will have him together. Amen. Look at what John chapter 16 verse 13 said. John chapter 16 verse 13 said, Habit when he, the spirit of truth, is come. John chapter 16 verse 13 a gospel of this and John chapter 16 verse 13 the Bible says habit when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come hmm? you're afraid of things to come but it's that when the Holy Ghost comes in your life he will show you things to come I release the grace to see things to come. The grace for things to come. Grace to, for God to open your eyes for you to see things to come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
every child of God is supposed to see a revelation of himself of things to come. That's why when you're moving, you move as somebody that knows the way. When you're making your budget, when you're planning, you plan like a king. Because you have seen tomorrow, you have seen your future. You are not blind in Christ. Stop worshiping God in blindness. Stop waiting for when that prophet will speak. Some people are not wanting to hear the word of God. They want to hear the word of prophets. The prophets are prophesying lies today. They, they just want you to only bow for them. But God said, don't bow for any prophet. Bow for Jesus of Nazareth. Bow for the king of kings. He, want, he needed a personal relation with you. You are doing well before until that prophet came and prophesied that nonsense to you. You have fear. Who is this person here? You, you, who is this person here? You, you have a brother in America. You have a, 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 a sister in Europe. Tell your sister this, so tell your brother this, so you have somebody in Asia, eh? In Indonesia, eh? You, ha you, you have somebody there in Malaysia, eh? Tell the person this and this, so the prophet has spoken. Prophet of doom. They won't tell you, tell your brother to be born again and repent. What, what calamity is higher than going to hell? May God share us favor. Things to come. Have let a lot of people, what am I going to do now? You know, if I stay without getting married, if I stay without having a child, and this and this and that. A woman felt the husband could not pregnant her. And things to come. She went and met another man. And told the man, my husband could not pregnant me. Please pregnant me and let me have children. And at the end of the day, they succeeded in having three children. And the man was dancing and said, yes, I am donor. I am donor. Of the children, not knowing that the husband have played, the wife have played a different game altogether. And that man that pregnant, the children grew up. And that man that pregnant, the woman, and they have three children. The man married without having a child. After 10, 15 years, the children are grown up already. He has to come and make trouble. He said, Madam, tell your husband though, we need to share these children. Tell them they are my children too. They are my children, oh. The woman said, don't do this to me. He said, I beg you. How can I stay without having my own children? When I see my children outside, are you not a fool? Why did you do that, by the way? You went against the will of God. If you have made a mistake in life, confess them before God. And he will show you favor and mercy. Than destroying life and destroying families. Living in worries. The Holy Ghost will show you things to come. But when you don't know things to come, you see yourself living in worries. When you don't know things to come, you see yourself, you know, all your, everything, problem, trouble, this and that and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be shaking every time because you don't know. You don't know what you're asked to do. For you to be afraid of tomorrow, it means you have not done what First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 said. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7. Do it now. The Bible says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. Carry all your cares, all your worries, all your debts, everything. Carry all your cares upon him. Throw it to Jesus and say, Lord, I've been carrying this thing. It has been too heavy. Lord, it has been too heavy. Too heavy on me. I can't carry them anymore. Many of us are carrying heavy load. Many of us are carrying a lot of load. Lord, I am carrying this load. Lord, this is too heavy. Oh, what a load. Hey, I'm carrying a heavy load. Why are you carrying a heavy load? He said, cast your care, say, from today, make a realization and say, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, thou Lord, you are not meant for me. In the name of Jesus, come out. In the name of Jesus, you look at me, I've been carrying it for long, I throw you away. I'm a free man, I'm a free woman. No more Lord of me. I have dropped my Lord where they're supposed to be. I have dropped my Lord at the foot of Jesus of Nazareth. I am blessed, I am favored, I am connected. I am favored. Why are you carrying the load? When the Lord said, cast your cares upon me, for I care it for you. Jesus is caring for you. He has conquered the devil. He has conquered Lucifer. He has conquered your fears. Those things that make you to be afraid have been conquered by God himself. If God has conquered the devil, if God has conquered power of darknesses, then what is your problem? Then why must you still live in fear? Why must you still live in problems? 
when the devil and power of demon and power of darkness have been conquered by God himself. Fear, torment, torture. Bible says fear have torture and torments. Look at the way you're looking. <sighs> have fear not tortured you enough? You don't know it is your turn to torture fear now. Eh? Fear have tortured you enough. Tell fear, it is my turn to torture you. And I'm going to torture you. As you tortured me without mercy, I will torture you back without mercy. It's my turn to torture you. And every fear in your life must have to obey the word of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are living in worry, things to come. These are some of the things that have put people in whatever good they, they, they wanted to do for God. Look at what the Bible said in the book of Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 25. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 25. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 25. Heaviness in the heart of man make it stop, but a good word make it glad. Heaviness in the heart of a man. Hmm? Heaviness in the heart of a man make it the heart to stop walking. Nothing good comes in. You don't see anything real, real in any form good. Why? Because... <laughs> There's nothing really good. Nothing is working in that heart. Because the heart is having overload. Though. The heart is loaded with the things that are heavier than the heart. Hmm? Heavy load. Heavy load in the heart of a man will make the heart to stop. But Bible said, cast all your cares upon him. For he cared for you. Eh? God cared for you. He's a God that cares for you. He's a God that cares for everything about you. Therefore, if God is caring for everything about me, then look at how this version put it. Look at how uh, my, 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 my message Bible put it. It said, worry weighs us down. Oh my God. Worry weighs us down. Say in the name of Jesus. Bible said, worry weighs us down. Say worry in the name of Jesus Christ. You have weighed me down enough. Worry and worries. Enough is enough in the name of Jesus. Amen. The scripture said the worries weighs us down. A cheerful word picks us up. Hallelujah. He said worries weighs us down. A cheerful word picks us up. May you pick up, may, be, may you be picked up by a shuffle word now. It is well with your soul. It is well with your spirit. The Bible says, tell the righteous that it is well with him. The righteous child of God, it is well with you. The righteous man of God, it is well with you. No matter how many much you are owing as a debt, it is well with you. No matter your house rent that is spider, it is well with you. No matter there is no food in the house, it is well with you. No matter that this and this is happening, it is well with you. No matter you are sick, it is well with you. Come on, receive another thought of yourself. Have another mentality and ideology about yourself now. That it is well with you. He came that he might destroy the works of the devil. Anything happening to you that is not of God is of the devil. And Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Say, devil, your work must be destroyed in my life. And I destroyed them totally in the name of Jesus. It shall be like that. And God shall be glorified. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. In Jesus' name. You have had it. Let things to come. Not be the things that separate you from the love of God. God is faithful. His love must rule your life. His love must be sweeter. I will deep a little deeper. Jesus' love must be sweeter. I will deep a little deeper, deeper. Yeah. I will deep a little deeper. Jesus' love must be sweeter. I will deep a little deeper, deeper. Yeah. Jesus' love must be sweeter. I will deep a little deeper, deeper. Yeah. And I'll have every cause to glorify the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Beloved of God, it's well with you. Stop getting worried. Stop getting troubled. Stop feeling it is all over. It's not all over. It's the beginning of great things to come. God is interested in you. Let us pray together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you begin to pray your mouth and say, God, I'm promising you, 
things to come, 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 you cannot hinder me. 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 You cannot remove the love of God. Things to come, you cannot put in tears in me again. Things to come, things to come. Can you begin to pray and answer, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God? Things to come cannot be a hindrance to me again. Things to come cannot separate me. I've been afraid of this. Supposing this business fell. Supposing this fell. This and this and that. Supposing this marriage fell. Supposing this child died. Supposing the, my husband sacked me. Supposing my wife said it. Things to come. Bible said, ask me concerning things to come so that you're going to know what to do. God is not the problem. You are the problem. But tell yourself, I've been the problem. And today, going to problem solve. That the mighty hand of God will come upon you. And Christ's name shall be honored, adored, and magnified forever. Thank you, Lord, for the great answer. Begin to tell him, Lord, thank you for the word of God. You have allowed me to hear. I'm privileged to hear this word of God. That things to come will not separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. That things to come will not separate me. Things to come will not separate me. Things to come will not separate me. Things to come will not separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. The mighty hand of God upon me and the great grace of God upon me. God, Lord Almighty, and his mighty hand of grace walk upon me. And his mighty hand alone be honored, adored, and magnified forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 Things to come, you are, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me. I'm unstoppable. In the name of Jesus, I will move ahead. We are marching forward. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I am marching forward. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, I give you praise and worship you. You are the mighty man of Allah. You are the rock of ages. You are Jesus of Nazareth. Having had your word today, O God, your word is forever settled in heaven. To you alone be all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, having spoken to your people right now, O God, as many that have been having fear of the future, O God, fear of the known, a lot of troubles and worries and anxieties kept coming their way. Mighty man of Allah, the Holy One of Israel, I breach them down, I destroy them. Father, the fear of unknown, the fear of breakage of marriage, the fear of not having children, the fear of not getting married, the fear of losing jobs, the fear of this and that, every fear the devil have clamored round about to, I destroy them in Jesus' name. Let the power of God, let the fear of God, let the glory of God, let the mercy of God come your way, that you will know God and love God and come closer to God, that the merciful hand of God will walk upon you and Christ's name shall be honored and adored forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my King and my God, the Holy Mighty Father, the Savior of the world, Jesus mighty in battle, the marvelous Holy One of Israel, let the peace rule over our life, that from today onwards, O oh Lord, we shall no more be afraid of the future, we shall no more be afraid of the devil and what he has planned, and we will open our eyes to know that our future is in the hands of the Lord. Open our eyes to know that God wants to reveal our future to us, O oh God, and the, 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 that God wants us to ask him concerning our future, and we will ask him about that, and he will show us that. Thank you for the great answer. Be praised and be glorified, be magnified and worshipped, be honored and adored, your name be praised, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the great answer. Jesus be glorified. Be honored at all. We say thank you, Lord. In the excellent name of Jesus, we decree. Amen. You are free. You are free. You are free. You are free from fear of unknown and fear of the future. You have been delivered from that. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you had this word and you're not born again, where can they take you to? It's just like you in a moment taking honey after some time the thirst will go. Can you say, if you want to receive Jesus, can you say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I am a sinner. Come into my life. Be my King and God and Lord. Be my Father and my Savior. Give me grace to live a holy life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Now and forevermore. Amen and amen. May God keep you and bless you. May God renew you and favor you. Give you grace to be a child of God. And live for God and God alone. Now and forevermore. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. You are not a seed of God. 
Your sins and yesterday have been forgiven. Live a holy life now and God will help you. When I closed my eyes, I was praying. I began to see wings of wings, golden wings, feathers, golden ones. And the Lord said, I'm going to give somebody a golden wing. Oh my God. One, you will be outstanding. You will shine and you will fly higher. Receive it. That person, I don't know who God is talking to. He said, this month of September, somebody is going to have a golden wing. This way it makes you to be outstanding among other people. God will honor you this month. And after honoring you, he make you outstanding. You, after that, you will soar higher. This message I'm giving is for somebody here. That's what the Holy Spirit said. Please call me to tell me as the moment it happens. Don't call me to tell me that you are the one. You are claiming it. No, when it happens, call me to tell me. So that day you were preaching. You say you saw if somebody would go in. You saw wing. You saw feathers of eagle. And then I saw it open up. We are decorated, shining, and the Lord said, I'm giving somebody a lift. I'm giving somebody wing of ego. I'm giving somebody, I'm making somebody outstanding here. I am decorating somebody here. I am making somebody to know that he is not serving me in vain. She's not serving me in vain. He's not serving me in vain. I don't know who the person is, but there shall be laughter. In advance, in the how many hours time we're going to enter the month of September, but I'm going to pray for everybody here in advance in the month of September. I pray in the name of Jesus. Because the month of August has ended, we give you praise alone. Father, anything that is bad in the month of August, let it go with August. Any favor, goodness, mercy, miracle, anything good, uplifting spirit, encouragement you have in the August, I shift it for you to go cross over August to September in the name of Jesus. In, with an agreement, I welcome the month of September in the name of God the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost for you and for every one of us. We're going to see the month of September in honor. We're going to see it in peace. We are alive. We see the month. We'll be alive. The month of September will end. We will see joy in September. We will see peace in September. We will see health in September. We will see opportunities in September. We shall see great flow of God and goodness in September in the mighty name of Jesus. And the month of September is decreed and declared. The month God will be supreme above everything in your life. From this month of September, the supremacy of God will be seen in all you do. In your prayer point, the supremacy of God will come. In your attack, you have been having the supremacy of God will manifest. In that depth, you are owing the supremacy of God will manifest. Everything round about you, within you, round about you, the supremacy of Jehovah Shalom will manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. And Christ's name shall be glorified. I bless the month of September for you. You will sleep and wake up in the newness of life in the month of September. You will see peace of God. You will see joy of God. You will be fulfilled this month. Your testimony will come. God said he's going to settle a lot of people this year. May your unsettlement begin this September. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. And Jesus loves you more. I'm going to see you by next tomorrow, which is Wednesday. I'm going to see you again. We're going to finish the assist part of this message invite more people please share this message share 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 to more and more people and christ shall be honored in you you are the best remain favored and remain blessed in jesus name amen until we meet again god bless you